Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. It's been an incredible Friday, as you've already know. And if you haven't seen it, check out my reaction and breakdown to this morning's incredible, or if you're watching this next day on Saturday, the day before's morning incredible um, Zactivation. <laughs> Zack Snyder released posters. We had press releases, which I'll cover here now, and some hopes for Zack Snyder's Just League. But before we get all into that, I have to thank my newest member of the Ping Pong Flick Show. Thank you so much to Salsa Picante for joining as a Ping Pong Flicks member. Now, originally, I thought there was like some kind of thumbnail there. Um, but uh, as you know, I zoomed it in, it's it's blank. But um, thank you so much for joining as the Ping Pong Flick Show member. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you. We reached 19,000 subscribers. Insane. Uh, that's insane. <laughs> that's but uh, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, supporting my channel, and also members to you as well. Thank you so much for being members. I can't wait to get to 20,000, uh, and I can't wait to get uh, I'll give away some uh, some DC Funko Pops, like, like up there. All right, let's get to the show. The first topic of the day is official Godzilla YouTube channel. Yeah, this was on Twitter. Uh, thanks to Mani V and Kryptonian, he pointed this out to me. Toho has launched a new Godzilla channel on YouTube to celebrate the King of the Monsters and its nearly seven decades of entertainment with the world. Expect to see a number of classic and exclusive content coming soon. Be sure to subscribe. Now, when you go to this channel, there's only two videos right now. That's like, I think it was King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But, you know, I'm thinking this is the official one. They'll probably have a lot more. If it's like the Tokusatsu channel right now, I don't know if you know about that one, but there's like Common Writer series on there. There's tons of other stuff. There's like uh, lots of different Tokusatsu shows that you would never have seen in America until today. So definitely that there's a lot of cool things happening on on that channel. So I'm thinking hopefully Godzilla channel will be the same thing. You know, I can imagine Godzilla versus the Sea Monster, Son of Godzilla. You know, is it Showa series, Heisei series, Millennium series? I don't know, but um, definitely I want to see what kind of content it's going to be on there. Um, and so Godzilla channel, look forward to that. Click on it. Subscribe if you can. All right. The next topic is another kaiju film that I actually really enjoyed when it came out, and that's Cloverfield. Well, now, apparently, there's a true Cloverfield sequel in the works, right? This is coming from Bloody Disgusting. For real this time, an actual Cloverfield sequel now in the works. So you're like, wait a minute. Didn't they already have the Cloverfield sequels? It was kind of like an anthology. I would say the, the second one was called 10 Cloverfield Lane, but they, they actually took a script called, I think it was called The Cellar and or, or something. I forgot what it was called. And they adopted that and put the Cloverfield name on top of it, on top of it, but it really didn't, you know, you could probably distinct, you know, kind of cue in to certain things that could connect to the actual Cloverfield movie. But for the most intensive purposes, it wasn't a, a true sequel. Then came Cloverfield Paradox, which they took another space type movie and adopted that into Cloverfield and added the monster and scenes on Earth. But essentially, it wasn't what we wanted. You know, we wanted to know what happens at the end of the movie of, for the first Cloverfield. Well, it's now been well over 10 years since the found footage. Uh, film Cloverfield brought a giant monster into New York City. The 2008 film subsequently spawning a loosely connected universe of movies that has thus far including this excellent 10 Cloverfield Lane and the not so excellent The Cloverfield Paradox. But what about an actual proper Cloverfield 2, you ask? And they're finally getting one. So this is actually coming from The Hollywood Reporter, but I, I just couldn't find it. As J.J. Abrams' company Bad Robot has hired Joel Barton to write the script for what's being described as a true Cloverfield sequel. They also note that Bad Robot Paramount sequel will not be a found footage film. The site also notes details of the take are being kept hidden under Central Park. So it's definitely um, going to take place right after the movie, uh, right after the first film where, you know, they the came, the, the bombs came down, uh, you know, 
probably killed all the people there, um, but the monster still lives. You can hear it at the end of the movie, right? And so there was a little mystery about that. Now, what I'm asking is, that, does this discount what happened in Cloverfield Paradox? Does this discount 10 Cloverfield Lane? Is this like, okay, those two never happened. This is the real sequel, kind of like other movies are have done uh, in a way. Um, so I'm wondering if this is the case for this Cloverfield movie. Now, the one thing that I was hoping was that it would be another found footage film. I think the magic of Cloverfield was not only it's a kaiju film, but it was from perspective of a person down on the ground and his point and his point of view. I thought that was the thing that made first Cloverfield amazing. Besides the lore, besides what all that um, all that content and, and things that you know the previewed before that and all the little virtual games and virtual Easter egg hunt that we were doing uh, after the movie as well. But I thought that 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 whole found footage thing actually made it work better. So I'm kind of I'm kind of like, well, is this going to be another Blair Witch 2 situation? Because Blair Witch 1 was great. It was found footage. Blair Witch 2 wasn't found footage. And the newest Blair Witch I actually liked. It was found footage. You know, I thought that actually worked. A lot of people didn't like it. I actually did like the, the last, the latest Blair Witch 1. Um, so I'm, I was wondering, you know, I think it works better as a Cloverfield, but it's okay. I think uh, as a kaiju film, I'm really... Uh, excited to see what they can come up with this, how much more they can build to the lore, and if they're going to discount Cloverfield Paradox altogether. So um, definitely excited for this. This is one to be uh, looking out for. I'm actually a little disappointed, like just a little bit. You know, I love the news and love the things, but I'm kind of disappointed how it came out because when the first Cloverfield came out, it was in a trailer in theaters for Transformers, the first one. We didn't know what the heck was going on, and we, it just it just made us really excited. I was almost hoping that like a, just a trailer just drops out of nowhere, and it, it just shows you something, and you don't like what is going on. All the viral marketing for that. So uh, I'm really excited to see if that would be the case for this one. Maybe later on, they'll just kind of let you forget and they'll just drop something and we'll be like, what the heck is this? Oh, it's a new Cloverfield movie. So, but this is definitely exciting. I'm really excited for this one. I can't wait for a, a real Cloverfield sequel. All right, by far the biggest news of the day, as you may already know, is that Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zack Snyder himself, Zack activated the marketing by dropping the posters. But I'm going to talk about a little bit more about the press release. Yes, I kind of read the official synopsis, but I want to share with you all the, the press release that tells you um, where is this going to come out, right? So Zack Snyder's Justice League, this is coming off from the Warner Media website, um, their own website. New teaser art for the Max original full-length feature film from Warner Brothers Pictures in DC now available. So you got the posters here, as I've, I've covered in the other video. Uh, it's up in the upper right-hand corner if you want to take a look at it. Um, and definitely the reels are right there. By the way, when you get closer to this, people have mentioned... The, the shot over here is uh, the team standing together. Uh, okay, so HBO Max announced today that the Warner Brothers Pictures and DC full-length Max original feature film, Zack Snyder's Justice League, will premiere on the platform on Thursday, uh, March 18th. The announcement came with the debut of three new teaser posters. So the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League will be across uh, Warner Media and DC platforms, supported across, including a soundtrack release on Water Tower Music, a curated collection from Warner Brothers consumer products available exclusively at DC Shop. And that's, you saw the Steppenwolf uh, shirt and the Dark Side shirt. And a first of its kind immersive at-home dining experience in the US and UK with Wonderland at Home. So you can check that out, wonderlandathome.com. They, they comes like a mother box where you um, get your own food. Um, and this, you know what, let me, let me go into that. You know, might as well go into that. So it, it has, it's cool. It's like 130 bucks for feeding two, then you can feed four. Um, this is the one right here, Wonderland and Home serves uh, Zack Snyder's Just League. And I don't know if there's a video. There's a video. Oh, no. This is just the trailer. 
uh, create a reinvention of the fan favorite Big Belly Burger, one of the fast food brands from the DC Universe. Zip on the jitters coffee and make an incredible dessert straight from the cornfields of Smallville. Within the box is a tasting menu of treats along with two beers and some surprise sens um, sensorial extras marrying both the physical and digital worlds together. Fans can also expect interactive games and exclusive content to enjoy online. Dishes to be revealed in the run up to the launch. Keep an eye on our, our, our social. So it's 130 bucks, 130 dollars per mother box, and I think you actually do get a freaking mother box, and it's probably out of cardboard um, with all this the dishes inside it, right? So I was excited for this until I found out that it doesn't ship to Hawaii. So damn it, but that's all right. <laughs> Damn it! That's all right. <laughs> it's cool. Um, um, I'm hoping someone would uh, order this in the mainland. Um, Dave, I don't know if you're watching or Garza, uh, please order it for yourself. Do uh, an opening of it, and I, I want to see what that all looks like. So that's kind of cool. Box for two, box for four. That's that Wonderland uh, thing that we're talking about. So the company also announced the first wave of international launches for Zack Snyder's Justice League. So this is for your international guys out there and girls. Concurrent with the premiere on HBO Max in the U.S., the DC film will be available exclusively on HBO services in Europe, across the Nordics, Central Europe, Spain, Portugal, as well as on the HBO Go service in Asia. In Latin America, the title will premiere exclusively on HBO Max, when the service launches in the region later this year. Details on additional international release dates and plans will be announced as soon as they are available. So HBO territories in Nordic region, which include Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. HBO territories in Central Europe includes uh, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, uh, the Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, Bosnia, Herze, I don't, I don't can't say that. Herzegovina, Macedonia, Serbia, Slovenia, Poland, Montenegro, and uh, Croatia. HBO Go territories in Asia include Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, Hong Kong, Taiwan. Right, and then I already uh, said the the you know the what do you call it? the synopsis over there on on the other video, so uh, you can go and check that out. But you also know us about Zack Snyder's Justice League, a little bit about them. This is funny. About Warner Brother Pictures and about DC. Weird. It is weird, though. Why is it weird? Well, like I said in the other video, every account supported Zack Snyder's Justice League, AT&T, even DC Comics. Dan Jurgens came out and, and actually said he's flattered by the, um, you know, that Superman type of, you know, thing going on there. But, um, and, you know, Warner Media, AT&T, uh, all the HBO accounts, HBO Max, TNT, who didn't support it? Warner Brother Pictures. Warner Brother Pictures did not tweet out a thing all day. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Crazy, it's crazy. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna show you here. I'm not lying. They didn't tweet out a thing. Not a goddamn thing. Those petty mother effers did not retweet. They retweeted Wonder Woman 1984. They retweeted the little things, which is on on HBO Next right now. I just watched it. It's actually really good. Um, that, they retweeted that, retweeted that, retweeted that, 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 all, all that stuff, right? They re even retweeted HBO Max on that. Malignant. All that. This is, this is before already. This is our January 26th. How petty can you be? Your name is literally on the press release, Warner Brother Pictures, and you don't support. <laughs> you don't support Zack Snyder's Just League. You petty mother effers. You should be, oh, but that's okay. You know what? We don't need you. As long as we got the parents, the parent companies, we got the parent companies supporting Zack Snyder's Justice League. We got the man himself, Jason Kylar, uh, supporting Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? That's that's the important part of it because they're the ones that overruled Warner Brother Pictures in the first place, and they're the ones that are going to decide the future of, of Zack Snyder's Justice League. So even Jason Kylar 
got eyes on that. Definitely support right there. So screw you, Warner Brother Pictures. If you are trying to stop this hype train, you can't stop this train now. You have no power here. We're about to wreck this. We're gonna about to put up this Justice League all up in here, right? Man, but Ray Fisher, he's hyped. It's time to rise above and rally y'all. Let's go. Guess who responded to Ray Fisher? The official Snyder Cut account, which is from Warner Media, said Borg Life. Borg Life. You see what I'm getting at here? There is a certain type of... Um, communication or, or actually no relationship that's happening here that we are seeing in the foreground that's happening in the behind the scenes we're seeing a disconnect here we're seeing war media at and supporting the heck out of Zack Snyder's Justice League and Ray Fisher and you don't see a lick from Warner Brother Pictures how petty is that how petty is that right so but yeah so the only thing we can do is definitely uh, support, uh, you know, Zack Snyder's Just League. They're watching. Warmy is watching. Jason Kylar is watching. In fact, you know, Gal Gadot, did, I don't think she, I'm not sure if she tweeted uh, Zack Snyder's Just League or not, but she did tweet out this. This is amazing. Thank you. Wonder Woman 884, Wonder Woman Film, HBO Max. Wonder Woman 1984 makes huge streaming debut. Nielsen says, the movie's premiere on HBO Max racks up the most viewing time yet for a feature film according to the rating service. Take a look at this. So number one, Wonder Woman 1984, HM Max, 2.25 billion minutes viewed. 2.25 million uh, billion minutes viewed. Number two is Soul, Office, amazing hold for Office. Uh, Bridgerton, The Midnight Sky, Mandalorian, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, on and on and on. But look at that. Number one, 2.25 billion minutes viewed. In fact, there that's minutes, right? Minutes viewed. And I think that uh, equated out to 14.5 uh, million views, right? Just like YouTube. You got views and you got watch time. Uh, YouTube likes watch time because it means you're, you're staying on for the longest possible time on a, on a video. Um, that helps out the creator. But uh, definitely the views also matter as well because uh, that's people who want to watch your video. But definitely... 14.5 million people watched or, or viewed uh, Wonder Woman 1984. That's huge. 2.25 billion minutes viewed. That's like a that's a two and a half hour movie. Look how much it went over these series. Mandalorian, you think would have a lot of you know um, watch time because it's episodic. There's it's a whole series. The Office as well, but no, I mean at the one given moment, in that just amount of time. Wonder Woman 1984, which made it possible to green light Wonder Woman 3. They green lit Wonder Woman 3 over 14 and a half million views, which equates to 2.25 billion minutes viewed. Just that. And they said, let's do Wonder Woman 3. So that's our criteria, folks. That's our where we're headed. That's where we have to blow out of the water. If you think Wonder Woman 1984 is, is um, something the most viewed, I'm going to have to bet Zack Snyder's Just League is going to blow that out of the water. It trended today. It's like it trended. Every time Zack Snyder posts something, his name trends. It, it's just, and I hopefully, I'm pretty sure it's, it, it'll equate to some actual views here, but definitely. It's going to be huge and hopefully big enough for Warner Media to be like, calls up the phone. Hey, Toby Emmerich. Hey, Mother Effer. I need you to green light Zach. Stop. No, 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 shut up. No, shut up. No, no, I don't want to talk to Walter. No, I don't want to talk to Walter. No, no, Toby, Toby, Toby. I don't care what your daughters think. I don't care. No. No, we don't like Joss's League. No. 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 Yes. Yes. No. You are going to green light Zack Snyder's Just League 2. No. 
I don't want to hear anymore. No, no, no. Stop complaining. No. Hello, Toby. Hello. To God damn it, Toby. So that's what I want them to do. And I think we can accomplish that by making Zack Snyder's Justice League perform out of the water. Like definitely just make it so big that we will definitely just make it happen. All right. We got it. This cut release. We can get it to go further. We can get it to go further, right? So, and, and I want to just live in there more hopes for the future of Zack Snyder's Just Lee is what I'm talking about here. And it's just these tinfoil moments that I'm still kind of just, just thinking of as I'm seeing all these rando tweets here from the Snyder Cut account, uh, which is cool because they, they even said Zactivation. Like Zack Snyder, the Snyder Cut account said Zactivation, which is really cool. But they respond to Ray Porter. Ray Porter says, us united. And the Snyder Cut account says, bring on the invasion. And I'm like, Br wait, bring on the invasion? You're talking to Dark Side. Doesn't Dark Side doesn't invade till Justice League 2, I thought. So there's two things there. Either we're going to see something substantial that, you know, Zach was hiding this whole time and and was making us think that Dark Side is not very prominent in the movie. Not going to happen in four hours. But, or, are they saying that, hey, this could go well, and this, judging from the response, just for over, over posters, over, over three black and white meta posters with none of the characters on them. None of the characters on them. There's a JL symbol, but none of the characters are on them. It doesn't even say Zack Snyder on it, you know? It just says streaming. That's enough to get people hyped up. That's enough to get things trending. And that's enough to blow things out of the water. The Snyder Cut says, bring on the invasion. What do you mean? Like Justice League 2? Man, I hope so. But yes, we're going to have to... We're going to really have to get Warren Media to force Toby Emmerich and Walter Ramada to green light Zack Snyder's Justice League 2. So let's do this, guys. I know you can do it because we've done it before. We got them to release it. Now we just got to let them continue it. It's not the end of the road. It doesn't lead uh, into a small little cul-de-sac. It's a, it's, It may be a cul-de-sac, but it's a big one, like a big one. And with multiple roads coming out of it, that could possibly uh, have a bigger effect on the universe, right? So I just want to pull this up, Krypton Cage, put this together. Um, and this is just uh, for the people who want to, you know, and have the means to um, internationally want to see Zack Snyder's Justice League on March 18th of 2021. So with Zack Snyder's Justice League coming soon, he's put together a step-by-step -step guide to get HBO Max in your country, and it works. This method is very easy, and anyone can follow it. Link below. Enjoy. So this is the PDF guide. I'm going to... Oh, excuse me. I'm going to link this in the description down below, and I'll probably pin it in the comment as well for anybody who wants to take a look at that and see what they come up with. This. So, uh, Krypton Cage, yeah, thank you so much uh, for putting that out. Uh, definitely excited uh, for that. So, uh, like I said in the other video, coming out March 18, 2021, the trailer is coming out February 14, 2014. Valentine's Day. So that would be a great opportunity to ditch your date and go watch the Zack Snyder's Just League trailer. Or no, no, no. Uh, if you get a date, um, make sure that when she's not looking, you check over your phone, you watch it. <laughs> or you take her, you know, take her back to your home or him over to go over to his house or your house or whatever. And then when they're when they're going to power their nose, or use the bathroom, turn on YouTube, turn on and, and watch the trailer over there as well. So there's many, many, many very um, you know different ways you can get out of the of that situation and and watch Zack Snyder's Justice League trailer. <laughs> so um, definitely, uh, hopefully my wife didn't hear that. Yeah, I don't think she did. All right, well, let's get into the members' comments and questions today. Uh, I'm going to go to two videos because, you know, I released one this morning. But I want to go back to that one that, um, you know, not many people checked out because everybody was waiting for um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? So, Eric Blake, my absolute favorite part of Alicia Vikander's first Tomb Raider film is when, after fighting bad guys and surviving the rapids, she finds shelter in the wreckage of a plane and is eager to rest because she's completely worn out, exhausted, 
and drained. And then the plate starts to creak and move out of position, about to go down the rapids. And poor Laura Croft responds, really? Yeah, I mean, it's if you've played the games, it's it's really like that. It's like there's just one thing after the other. You're like, oh, 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 you know, and seeing her die like multiple, multiple times. Um, I love the idea of George Clooney doing a Buck Rogers remake. Even back before the 70s show, Buck was a key sci-fi hero icon since the golden age of the 50s. Now the question is, who could play the other sci-fi golden age hero who has various incarnations over the years? Who could play Flash Gordon? I don't know. You know, in a way, even though it's very not really, but in a way they were trying to do that with Thor Ragnarok, uh, I think Chris Hemsworth could probably play Flash Gordon. I could totally see him play Flash Gordon. I don't know if anybody would agree with that. Shane asked Alvin, I have a question for you. If you were to do a Sonic universe like they have alluded to, what character arc would you like to see? I want Knuckles in the arc where Robotnik uh, manipulates him into thinking Sonic was the villain and stealing Chaos Emeralds. Failing that, seeing Shadow would be cool as well. I agree with you. Actually, I was going to say that. Shadow, I would love to see that uh, definitely in, in that. I've seen only um, a little bit of what the kids were watching Sonic. My own Sonic knowledge is from just, you know, grabbing all the rings on a side scroller view. Like, I really didn't know the story at all. That's pretty much my extent of that. But I saw the character Shadow, and I was like, that's a cool character, you know. So um, I know Knuckles is kind of like the Vegeta, but even Shadows is kind of like a Vegeta to me. So, um, and I love Vegeta. Uh, Shane asked Alman, Mechagodzilla would beat Superman if the metal tail had kryptonite grafted onto it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But then again, Metallo, he's a metal guy, and he had kryptonite, so they find a way to beat him. So, yeah, you never know. <laughs> Come on, guys. Release the Rados cut. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he's talking about because um, Ryan Reynolds said that Deadpool 3 was supposed to have Logan in it before Disney bought it. Sure. Shane James Prince. Following on from the question of who would win, Godzilla or Superman, do you think Godzilla will be able to rip Superman in half because Godzilla is so huge and Superman is tiny compared to him? I don't know. I think it would – well, it, because God, Superman with the sun, that's why I said that the sun is still yellow. He's pretty impervious to a lot of things, and I don't think Godzilla would be strong enough to do that. But these are fictional characters. I have no idea. That could definitely happen. Um, I'm trying to think of a giant monster that Superman had to deal with other than the one back in, um, what is that, the Max Fleischer cartoons? They had a Godzilla, which was just a giant dinosaur that breathed fire for some reason. And he was able to defeat him. So, uh, Aloha, Chris. Warm wishes from cloudy, frigid, cold, uh, 19 degrees, lower barrel, Pennsylvania. I call it 30 miles north of Pittsburgh. Really like the two Deadpool films and love the Logan film. Stay gritty, healthy, and strong. Thank you so much, Frank Dabrowski. Appreciate it. And uh, stay warm. <laughs> Manu Delpic, for the review of the RTSC book, though, it wasn't about the prose or anything, but the actual content seemingly being stuff we already know with heavy bias, but not the way we expect. Then again, Colbert says that so far he's not done. It's a pretty faithful retelling, and Sean did his research. Who knows? Hmm. Obviously, there are giant monsters fighting each other, but I wonder uh, how they'll explain Mechagodzilla. How can such a giant thing be constructed? I'm with you, man. It seems so. It does seem so far out there for me. Like the first one, and this is giant monsters, so they can't really be that far out. I mean, we got Pacific Rim, and they built giant robots. But in the, the, the lore of the film, it was like it was more on the realistic side, at least Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island. And then, you know, King of the Monsters got a little bit more crazy. And I think they're just expecting you to just say, you know what? This is a giant monster movie. We're going to have fun with it. Uh, Pacific Rim came out. They were able to build giant robots. Hey, this dude built a giant robot. You know, I just, um, but is actually a cyborg if it's really the exoskeleton of godzilla then that's even wow <laughs> that's even i'm really interested to see uh how that plays out all right so um the comments uh for and questions for the, the latest video with Zack snyder's justice league um uh posters shane asked element i love these and the meta messaging behind them these mean so much personally to me because i know these posters were for me thanking the rest of the release of snyder cut movement fallen risen reborn where tears in my eyes knowing what they mean hashtag zach snipes just thing it is it's a very emotional moment for us these posters were for us uh, definitely were for us they were made for the fans 
They were made for the Snyder Cut movement. This is our moment. This is a, this is our third moment. <laughs> I would say every every new thing is our moment. <laughs> the movie itself. Worth noting that the Dan, great Dan Jurgens, uh, yeah, the man who gave us the death of Superman, alongside Jerry Ordway, responded to the risen poster with a quote tweet saying "flatter." I replied, Mr. Jurgens, it would be awesome if, should the Snyderverse become an official Earth in the comics, we were to see you doing some projects in that universe, the Superman centric comics, perhaps. Jurgens liked my response, and considering how Zach said he's talked with Jim Lee about it, dare we hope Jurgens will also be involved. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see that Dan Jurgens would love to be involved. I think that would be pretty awesome, and you never know. That could, that could be the case. He definitely liked your response. Exclusive from Eric Blake. Uh, Brent T. Wilson, damn, the hype begins indeed. Uh, Sean Gates, these posters made my day. I was at work and had to check them out on my lunch break. Ray Fisher's caption on the follow one, Ben Toward Justice, really got me. It's a Martin Luther King reference. The moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Like it, like like even Ray Fisher said, like uh, it's a way to address the concerns of Warner Brother Pictures is to fully support Zack Snyder's Just League. Hmm. Okay, Keith, all of 3-18-21 shall be Snyder's. Gus J, I still can't believe all this is happening in this belief still. <laughs> it does. Sometimes I have to like, is this happening? Are we really? Is this really happening? And it is. Clay Cox, okay, it finally clicked for me that it's actually happening. Yes. John Aaron Garza, loved your reaction. It was very similar to mine, and those prints are with the league that we see in the trailer. Yes. Um, when, you, when you look close, a lot of people pointed that out. Zoom in. It's Zack Snyder's Justice League team. Um, or uh, The Justice League team just standing there on that silo thing. Or the cliff, actually. Uh, oh, no, the silo thing. Uh, Shane S. Allman, let's effing go. Jandon Patterson, morning, Chris, with the breaking news. Thank you, good sir. The 18th, nice. That movie, The Little Things I Mentioned and Talked to You About the other day, comes out January 29th, which is my birthday. Happy birthday, Jandon. Happy birthday. So that's a good present, LMF. Oh, well, <laughs> this was a great video, brother. Stay safe and take care. We'll keep this hot dog's light on for you. Go watch an old Motel 6 commercial to get the reference. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jandon. I appreciate it. The hype is real from Karan Prasad. It is indeed. And I think you said the same thing here, so I'll definitely heart it again. Carlos, and today is the day we all become slaves to the hype engine. Release the hype engine and restore the Snyderverse. Brandon Hayes, wow, I like the digital posters. It's simple, but it says a lot. I think it's also meant to demonstrate the fight that the fandom put up, the personal losses Zach has suffered and overcame, the pain of the DCU become the mess it has become, the broken vision, all the struggles, but it has brought us where we are now on top, if of it representing the nightmare timeline where Darkseid has taken over the Earth, the League is decimated by fighting back, Love the summary too. Each hero has a personal stake in the fight against Dark Side, stepping with the side, and love the emphasis on metahumans again. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Did I miss that? I think we can all see now that this was never going to happen under Jeff Johns and John Byrd. Yeah. And now that they're done, uh, gone, we have good old Walter who tried to bury this film and Snyderverse while protecting Jeff Johns and proposing bad ideas too. So thank God for the fans, the pandemic, and for streaming service. I can now enjoy DC on film again, which I didn't think was possible after four years of nonsense and all those movies there. I now can say the air, I now say bring on the air cut and respect the two fans. Respect to the fans, AT&T, for making this happen. P.S. I think it's painfully clear that what AT&T wants and what Warner Media and Warner Brother Pictures want are two different things, which explains why AT&T Twitter is promoting a Snyder Cut. Warner Media, Warner Brother Pictures. Well, Warner Media is not silent. Warner Brother Pictures is silent, as I showed you earlier. So let's focus on that. AT&T runs things. What they say goes. Apparently, they're on our side. Sides of the fans. Uh, right there. Fall in, risen, reborn. Next, restored. I like that. Next, restored. I like that. That's awesome. General Zod, the hype engine shall be released on March 18th. As you command, General. Us on March 18th, losing our minds. Release the hype engine. Release the hype engine indeed. So, and restore the ciphers. All right. Well, that is awesome. What a great way to uh, start the weekend on the on a high note. Again, on the 31st, right, that, that is this coming Sunday, 
Uh, let's do the hashtag Zack Snyder's Just League. Apparently, Zach knows about that, approves of that, and he's going to drop something about that on Zack Snyder's Just League. So on the end of this month, Pacific Standard Time, you know, in America, um, 131. I think it's two, I think it's gonna be 614 a.m. For California, so that definitely be four fourteen. Uh, I'm definitely gonna schedule a tweet, but it's gonna go down. Let's make a trend. Let's do it. It's gonna be fun. That's the important thing. Have fun with it. All right, guys. Well, and girl, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you absolutely love this daily dose of entertainment news and content, please click the like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that notifi uh, ah, notification bell and keep this mother effing hot dog light on. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next time.